epilepsy surgery in Asia before the 19th century. N. S. Chu, T. Hori, S. K. Lee, Y. Mayanaji, K. Radhakrishnan, and H. Shibasaki. F. 2. For preparing this chapter, data were collected by Drive N. S. Chu for China and Taiwan, by Dr. K. Radhakrishnan for India, by Drs. Y. Mayanaji and T. Hori for Japan and by epilepsy surgery in Asia before the 19th century. The collected data were integrated into a chapter by Dr. H. Shibasaki. In spite of extensive literature survey, at least in these countries, clearly documented evidence of epilepsy surgery has not been found until the end of the 19th century. However, Archaeological excavation of a multi trefined skull of a Neolithic woman from the pit dwellers of Berzaam in the northwestern Himalayan region suggests that trephination might have been practiced in prehistoric India for acquired neurological ailments. Multiple skulls from the same era have been found during different excavations providing evidence that trephination or multiple craniotomy was carried out by the Harappan people of Indus Valley. One particular skull from Berzaham, first discovered in 1968, revealed 11 attempts at trephination, with six neatly completed circular or oval perforations, all in the left parietal bone. The left calvarium showed hypertrophy, which could have been related to long-standing atrophy of the underlying brain. It is likely that drills of various sizes were used. However, no instruments for such surgery were found at the site, raising the speculation that an Indus civilization surgeon with personal instruments might have lived then. It was impossible to establish the precise symptoms that might have afflicted the individual, but the Berzaham woman might have been either insane, epileptic, or otherwise different. The carefully performed refination, suggestive of a multistage procedure on a possibly anomalous skull, argues for a surgical approach for medical reasons on a living person who did not survive the procedure. It is also likely that this might have been part of a ritual in a primitive society that regarded epilepsy or other neurological disease that the Berzaham woman suffered from to be a result of possession by spirits. About 2000 years ago in India, Medicine practice was based on Ayurveda, and Shalya Chikitsa was one of its major branches. The sage Sushruta was a master surgeon of his time, and his surgical techniques have been documented in the treatise of Sushruta Samhita. Although well versed in many aspects of surgery, no specific references to epilepsy surgery have been made in the treatise. In Ayurveda, epilepsy was referred to as apismara. The prefix apa meaning negation or loss and smara meaning consciousness or memory. At that time, aura was already recognized, and epilepsy was classified into four types according to clinical manifestations. Since then, a modern era of neurosurgery in India was not to commence for several millennia, until the arrival of the British. The first medical schools were established by the British in India in the 19th century. The first department of neurosurgery was founded in 1949 at the Christian Medical College of Valor, in southern India. The first modern epilepsy surgery in India was performed in 1951 by Jacob Chandy of the Christian Medical College, Valor. 
In China, skulls with holes that had evidence of healing were also found in prehistoric men on recent archaeological excavations. Shortly after, Hippocrates wrote a monograph on the sacred diseases in around 435 BC and opposed the supernatural force as the cause of epilepsy. The first description of a clinical picture of epilepsy in Asia appeared in the LLOW Emperor's Nei Qing in China which was compiled between 300. 100 BC and is considered the earliest work of classic Chinese medicine. It was in the section of Diankang that the falling sickness was mentioned. Diankang referred to madness or psychosis. Kang to mania. But Dian either to falling or insanity. The ambiguity of Dian led to confusion between epilepsy and insanity in Chinese medical literature. 8, 9. In the Siu dynasty in China, the term Xian was introduced and referred to convulsion or seizure. 10,11 in the authoritative book Principles and Practice of Medicine by Wang Kang Tang, Dian, Kang and Xi'an were put together as a title for a chapter. Twelve Chinese medicine was based on the concept of yin and yang, the theory of five elements, and the idea of the correspondence between microcosm and macrocosm. Thus, the falling sickness was considered a disease of excessive negative force, wind, excessive heat, excessive fullness, or emotional shock. Classification of seizures in China was first attempted by Chao Yuanfeng who proposed three classifications. Based on age of onset. Xian for seizures occurring before the age of 10 years and Dian for those occurring after 10. Based on symptoms and causes, Yang epilepsy. Ying epilepsy, wind epilepsy, wet epilepsy, and labor epilepsy. Based on causes, wind epilepsy, frightened epilepsy and eating epilepsy.10 another classification by sun 9781841845760CH02319083531 pm page 12 epilepsy surgery in asia before the 19th century 13 shu mo a contemporary of chao was based on the similarity of epileptic cry to animal cry. Goat epilepsy, horse epilepsy, pig epilepsy, dog epilepsy, cow epilepsy, and chicken epilepsy. 11. He also classified epilepsy according to the organ involved. Heart epilepsy, liver epilepsy, spleen epilepsy, lung epilepsy and kidney epilepsy. Eleven many etiologies were proposed and usually based on ying, yang imbalance, dysfunction of organs, climatic influence, and disturbance of qi, phlegm, and blood. According to Nei Qing, infantile seizure was caused by emotional shock of the mother when she was pregnant, and it was called fetal disease. For later authors, the main cause of pediatric epilepsy was prenatal maldevelopment or postnatal malnutrition. One, one it is interesting to note that only the brain was left out. In the early 19th century, Wang Chengzhen proposed that epilepsy was due to insufficiency of vital energy and blood stagnation of brain marrow. 13. Although he advocated brain as the seat of mind, he still considered the brain as bone marrow inside the skull.